What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overload here. So this will be the spoiler free review for The Wrath of Becky, aka Becky 2 for anyone who wants to call it that. It is the sequel to the indie film Becky from 2020, which was a surprising W for me. It became one of my favorite films of the year. And it is directed by Matt Angel and Suzanne Coote, this sequel that being. And the screenplay is also by Matt Angel as well. So Matt Angel not only directed it, but he wrote the entire storyline. So so this is starring Lulu Wilson, who is returning as the titular Becky. We have Sean William Scott, who many of you might know from American Pie mostly. And also, of course, from Final Destination, the original movie. So just to dive into the synopsis, this is set three years after escaping a violent attack on her family by four neo-Nazis. Becky, who is now 16, and her dog Diego live with a kind elderly woman named Elena Connor to rebuild their lives. But when a fascist organization known as the Noblemen break into their home, attack both Becky and Elena, and kidnap Diego, Becky must take on the nobleman by returning to her old ways to protect herself and her loved ones, rescue Diego, and uncover the nobleman's political attack plans before it is too late. Now, I will say that The Wrath of Becky was another wild, chaotic, bloody ride with one of my new favorite orphan type characters in Becky. Now, the sequel has a lot going for it that makes me prefer it over the original, but there's a couple things that make the overall quality, I would say, on par with the OG, if not just slightly better, which I did find to be a little disappointing i was just hoping this would be a lot better than the first movie uh, just in general be a lot better than what it actually ended up being but it's still a good enough movie for the most part i want to address like i did with my fast and furious review the uh, the pacing because this movie is somehow shorter than the original but certain moments in between where we spend time with our group of baddies for becky to slaughter are just a chore to sit through a group that again called themselves the Noblemen, a group that calls himself the Noblemen, led by Sean William Scott's character. And I'm pretty sure they were intended to be this extreme, of course, far right group, similar to our last group led by Neil Nazi, played by Kevin James. They're very unlikable characters, and that's fine, but it's possible to be unlikable and yet still interesting and compelling. These folks are very dull, flat, uninteresting for the most part, so I found it hard to connect with them. Political differences aside, these noblemen were just not very well written. They're very forgettable outside of Sean William Scott's character. You can be unlikable and again, yet still very interesting. They just do not have that outside of Daryl, who again is played by Sean William Scott. Before I go any further on our villains, Becky's life has been a revolving door of foster homes and Lulu Wilson's added narration to the story I thought was a nice touch for the sequel. We know of course she's now 16. She's working at a diner, I believe we see at one point. Becky eventually, of course, as you see in the synopsis, settles down with a woman named Elena, renting out a space in her home. This bond was only on screen for a short bit of time but it accomplished so much too which is one of the film's greatest strengths elena and becky are alike in a lot of ways when it comes to their upbringing and the little we learn about elena is is enough to invest in their friendship and enough to help drive the narrative when the noblemen uh end up effing with the wrong house now elena's story is also a contribution to becky's growth which i thought was a nice touch here as well since she herself feels isolated with nothing but grief and loss surrounding her similar to becky in the state that we find her in in the start of the beginning of the original movie and ultimately at the, by the end of the original movie and of course a little bit of how she's being portrayed now performance wise Great job from all parties involved. Scott, I would say, is a solid person to portray this leader of the Nobleman group. Wilson continues to capture Be Becky's rebellious nature while also showcasing that grief that exists within the young girl due to having to swallow a lot of hard pills at such a young age. I do have to say that Jill Larson, yes, Miss Deborah Logan herself, was the standout for me, and she only has a few scenes. I don't want to address too much about her, but she was just tremendous with her delivery, facial expressions, and the way she was portraying and carrying herself in this role. There's a lot of gore, of course. I know Becky is being compared to John Wick by a few, but I would like to think of her as the, the sister that Kevin McAllister deserved. There's a particular head explosion that was quite satisfying to witness and some other gory surprises that Becky has up her sleeve. I don't want to say that the transitions here in this movie in terms of the editing are as good as the original. If you are familiar with that first movie, you know that that first movie does has does have some very clever transitioning sequence. There's, those are still here, but not on par with the first movie. Um, by the end of it all, there is some giant narrative swings it's taking, leading us into a franchise of sorts. And I don't know if many people 
people will find this to be too extreme saying they're jumping the shark but i'm i'm on board with them fully embracing how campy this series is going to end up being if it ends up becoming more than just these two movies because they set itself up to be a trilogy perfectly or even go beyond just a third movie by the end of this one but i think that becky the wrath of becky was a, another solid entry into this hopefully growing series i would give it a seven out of ten if you haven't already of course make sure you go ahead and subscribe turn on post notifications you never miss a video in the description i'll have links on my social media accounts i am on facebook twitter and instagram you can message me there of course let me know if there's any movies news or reviews you like me to cover in the future and with all that in mind guys i will see you in the next video